Welcome back Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers Theory. Today's is going to cover why Barricade had different voices throughout the Bavers. But before we jump into that, a quick word from our sponsor NordVPN. Now NordVPN is a virtual private network that makes internet browsing completely anonymous from anyone besides yourself. This means from hackers trying to steal your personal information, to Soundwave trying to hack into your network in the hopes of finding the location of Megatron's body. Now Nord is one of the fastest VPNs that's currently on the market right now, and with one account you are able to put it on any six devices you own. This will prevent DDoS attacks from unexpected Cybertronians, and keep you safe and anonymous on the World Wide Web. Now I use NordVPN to keep my data safe. And nowadays where data is the new gold, it's a no-brainer to protect it. Now let's say you live somewhere where Transformers Dark of the Moon was banned on your favorite streaming platform. What do you do? Well, Nord comes to the rescue. By changing your location to where the film is accessible, you will be able to see it. And this works for any blocked content that you can't access in your country. Just switch your location and boom, you're in. So what are you waiting for? Go to nordvpn.com slash trans theories to get the Cyber Month deal of a two-year plan plus one additional month with a huge discount. And if you decide that Nord is not for you, don't worry, you have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Now, Barricade has had four different voices throughout the Bayverse. Two distinct ones played by his voice actor Jess Harnell, and two possibly unintended ones played by Frank Welker, who voiced Soundwave, Galvatron, Devastator, Grinder, Ravage, Reedman, and of course Megatron in TF5. So to get to the bottom of this, let's start with the first set of Barricade's voices. In Transformers 2007, Barricade was solely voiced by Jess Harnell. Are you username Ladies Man 217? I don't know what you're talking Are about. Are you username Ladies Man 217? But for some reason in the third film, Transformers Dark of the Moon, he was voiced by Frank Welker. Oh, you. Your time is up. Move it. And this is odd since Harnell provided the voice for Ironhide in the same movie. A common theory is that this was an editing error, with the voice lines for Soundwave being used for Barricade. The TF Wiki appears to state this as a fact, but fails to provide any evidence to back this up. But if you listen to the voices back to back, this theory falls flat on its face. Soundwave reporting, Lord Megatron. You, your time is up. I understand. No prisoners, only trophies. You. Your time is up. Now though these voices are similar, they are definitely not the same. But now the question is why did this happen? Now granted, there is no official answer to this, but I have a pretty good guess. I think Barricade was never intended to be in Dark of the Moon. I come to this conclusion since none of the movie adaptations nor novelizations for Dark of the Moon have Barricade in them. This is significant because of these novelizations and adaptations use an earlier version of the script. Hence why in the novel and comics we get to see Skids and Mudflap die, along with Optimus accepting Megatron's truce. Another thing that supports this theory is one of the language options for the Dark of the Moon movie. There is an option called English with audio descriptions, where a voiceover narrates what's happening in a scene. During Barricade's cameo, the narrator calls him Soundwave. Soundwave shoves Q. In the wrecked car, Sam and Carly watch as Soundwave blasts Q, who falls to his knees. Soundwave shoots Q again. Q's head falls off as he crashes to the ground. Interestingly enough, the narrator calls the protoform Soundwave as well, which leads me to believe that he was reading off an earlier script for this scene. Besides this error, everything in this section is stated on point. Interestingly enough, in the scene where Bumblebee gets kicked by Barricade, the narrator only states that Ratchet is being kicked by a Decepticon. On the upper level, the Decepticons hit and kick Ratchet. But to further throw evidence at Barricade never being intended for Dark of the Moon, in the scene where he pushes some protoforms around, he is called a large Decepticon. Below a large Decepticon shoves some of the other Decepticons as Shockwave looks on. And the scenes where he is attacked by the Nest soldiers do not fare any better since he's also called a Decepticon. As sniper bullets stagger two Decepticons, soldiers on the ground rush in and stab boomsticks into their feet. 
Now, though we don't know exactly how far Dark of the Moon was in production when this narration was recorded, it must have been pretty late into the game because of the majority of the narration is on point to what we see in the film. But to further prove this theory, there's an early concept scene where the Autobots are captured, with this version having Mirage being killed off instead of Wheeljack. And if you want to see the full version of this scene for yourself, check out my second channel, Transformers Behind the Scenes. But after watching this entire scene, Barricade is nowhere in sight, with a generic protoform taking his role as the one to kill the first Autobot. On top of that, there is an early concept scene of the Nest soldiers using boomsticks to kill some Decepticons. As we know, in the film, Barricade's leg was blown off by the soldiers. However, in this animatic, Barricade has been replaced by a generic protoform. So with all this evidence at hand, I think it's safe to say that Barricade was never meant to be in Dark of the Moon. So then, why was he added so late into the game? Well, if we backtrack to the scene where he first appears in, it is an emotional scene where we get to see Wheeljack get executed. As we saw in the pre-visualization clip, a generic protoform was going to be the one behind it but change that generic character into someone that we all remember, someone that we all care about, and suddenly we're more invested in the scene, which in turn makes this death more emotional. This is why I think a barricade was added. And since he was added so late into the game, apparent by the evidence at hand, it's likely that Harnell wasn't present to voice a barricade in this scene, since he already wrapped up his voiceovers for Ironhide. So Welker was brought in as a stand-in to voice Barricade, which explains why Barricade's voice in this scene is different from his one in TF1. Granted, that's my theory. And feel free to let me know if you agree or disagree with my analysis. But now let's move on to his second set of voices in The Last Night. And this is where a massive change is present. A dying knight gave it to a human, but there was too much TRF firepower. As you can tell, he sounds nothing like his two previous voices. Though there's no definitive answer on why they changed his voice this much, we do know that Bay wanted the voice cast to be less robotic and more human. This is clearly seen when the TF1 robot cast speak post-2007. My name is Optimus Prime. We are autonomous robotic organisms from the planet Cybertron. This is an engine part from a long-lost Autobot ship. You fail me yet again, Starscream. Get them! Spare me, you gaseous sycophant. You know what you are told, which is nothing. And this trend was implemented even more post-Dark of the Moon. Optimus Prime, he's very human in this film, and Michael, when he recorded Peter Cullen, he told him, let's go less robotic with your voice. Let's get the human emotion out of you, which I'm not sure we've ever seen Optimus Prime do before. So based upon this fact, I believe the reason for this change was because his OG voice was just too robotic. So they changed it to sound a lot more human in order for him to fit in with the rest of the cast. But things get very confusing when we hear him speak in his final scene. I've lived for this. I've lived to kill a planet. There is even a deleted scene where he speaks some more. For our world, I activate this portal. Yes. <laughs> It will be powerless. Now clearly we can tell that Harnell did not voice Barricade in this scene, and there is no official answer to who actually did, but it's a safe bet to say that it was likely Frank Welker. So then why did Harnell not voice Barricade in this scene? And well, this is a question that does not have a definitive answer, but I think it has something to do with The Last Night's production. You see, in a few scenes of The Last Night, there was alternate dialogue for characters depending on the version you watched. The theatrical release and DVD releases were the same, while the digital release had some differences. For example, if you saw the film at the theater, you would hear Hound say this. Oh yeah, big time. I should not have eaten all that Tijuana Street machinery. But the digital had him say this. Oh yeah, big time. Oh, been holding that one in for a while. Nitro Zeus had a similar situation, but instead he was voiced by two people. Stephen Barr originally recorded dialogue for Nitro Zeus in the pre-release version of the film, while for the finished version of the film, Nitro Zeus was revoiced by John DiMaggio. A mixture of DiMaggio and Barr's readings are used in the digital home release of the film. Take a time, I got a body. Uh, I kicked more ass in prison. Take a time, they got up out of here. Unfortunate, because I was looking to knock some heads. So considering that The Last Night had several voicing mishaps, 
I think it is safe to say that Barricade's last line may have been a result of that. As unlikely as this may sound, maybe this line was a last minute addition, and Harnell was not present when they needed to add this line into the film, so they got another voice actor to voice it. But your guess is as good as mine. But now it's time to tackle the in-universe explanation on why Barricade sounded different throughout the saga. His voice in the 07 film is indeed his original voice, but due to him staying on Earth for so long, he has started to adapt. This is why his voice in Dark of the Moon sounds more human than it does in the 07 film. And by the time The Last Night rolls around, Barricade has fully embraced Earth's culture, proven by the fact that he has changed his appearance to look like a police officer. I love how he gave himself a radio, brass knuckles, a gun holster, handcuffs, and a Decepticon police badge. But to fully seal the deal, he adapted his voice to match his appearance. Now, Barricade isn't the only Transformer who has adapted to Earth's culture by changing their voice to sound more humanoid. Almost every Transformer has done it, with the most prominent ones being Starscream, Ratchet, Optimus, and Ironhide. I live to serve you, Lord Megatron. The humans have taken it. Oh, my poor master. How it pains me to see you so wounded, so weak. The boy's pheromone level suggests he wants to mate with the female. We're all hiding. All Autobots are being hunted. We're all in danger. You don't seem afraid. Are you not surprised to see us? Autobots, lockdown is hunting us, and humans are helping. We need to know why. Well, I'm just saying we could. It's an option. Well, did you search the crash vault? So then why does Barricade suddenly switch to a more Cybertronian voice at the end of the film? Well, if we take into account the context of that scene, that being the Decepticons preparing to restore their homeworld, it all starts to make sense. Since, if you remember, their war destroyed Cybertron, causing most of them to take refuge on Earth. And after calling it home for a little over two decades, the Decepticons finally have a good shot of restoring their home by destroying the Earth. This is why I think Barricade discarded his humanoid sounding voice and opted for a more Cybertronian one. Since in his mind, the Earth was going to be destroyed and he and the boys would be able to go back to a restored Cybertron. So there would be no need to sound human anymore. And just like that, that was why Barricade had so many voices throughout the saga. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreon and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.